How's it going guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now with Lightfall just a few days away, I wanted to go through a checklist of things that I do in prep for launch day. So the first thing to know is the server downtime. Now the servers will be down for 24 hours before launch, meaning the game and APIs will not be accessible. So you're going to want to do a bit of prep work before this happens. And remember, when we can jump into Lightfall, the servers will be choppy and dim Ishtar on all the other apps you use. They will still be down for some time probably as well. So as soon as the game is brought offline at 9am PST on February 27th, you are going to be able to start preloading for Lightfall on all platforms. So make sure you do that so you are ready to go for when the servers come back up on the Tuesday. So beyond that, the first thing is to figure out what character you're going into Lightfall with first and streamline your weapons and armor. For weapons, I will have three on each slot to allow room for new weapons we'll be picking up. A good variety is key to weapons with perks like Volt Shot, Incandescent, Blinding Nage, Chill Clip and Headstone. They will all be good for the campaign. Same applies to your armor. Keep a few pieces on each type. For me, I'll have what I'm more comfortable with, like Omni Oculus Hunter, as I know that that will be the easiest for me when it comes to running the Legendary campaign. Now, the reason why I say to do this stuff with your character is because you're going to be getting a lot of weapons and new armor when Lightful drops. You're going to be intrigued, you're going to want to use stuff, and the last thing you want to do is have to go back to the tower, to the vault, then jump back into the activities again. Because do remember, like I've just said, the API will probably be down for quite a while. We don't know how long. It could be an hour, two hours, all day. You just don't know how the servers are going to react on the day. So it's definitely worth just doing this and leaving a good five to six spots for new gear to drop. For me, I'm going to be leaning into taking machine guns and grenade launchers due to the buff they're getting, along with some exotic weapons like Polaris Lance and the Two-Tailed Fox, because I'm really intrigued to try them out with the changes that are incoming to them. But remember, variety is good, and it's what you like using that is most important. Now with all the changes coming to mods, the first thing I'm going to want to do is remove the seasonal mods because they are not going to be tied to any piece of gear anymore. You're just going to unlock them from the seasonal artifact and they're just going to be passively applied to your build. So what I'll do is I'll remove these and then I can just lean into things like ammo finders, holster mods, well mods, charge with light, anything else like concussive dampener or resistant mods that are going to help you when you first start the campaign. So what you can do now is you can potentially set up your build for day one so you can jump straight in. Next up, Glimmer. Max your Glimmer out. There is absolutely no harm in doing this at all. You'll be using this quite often as well. So go to the Cryptarch and trade mats in. Obtaining Glimmer is so simple now. So there's no need to store exotic sparrows in the vault just to save them for later on when you need more Glimmer. Just max out your 250k now. And when you do need more, just come back to the crypt arc it's pretty simple so after that i'll be making my way over to the gunsmith and i'll be stocking up on a few upgrade modules so you'll be getting a lot of new stuff and you might want to infuse it up well not might you're definitely going to want to infuse it up we're going to get so much new gear coming our way so make sure you've got enough that you can just upgrade your new gear on the fly also remember you will also be getting a few of these within the season pass and just a side note, you will be leveling up to the soft cap 1750 really fast, which means that any well drops you get from anything you're doing is going to be a higher power level than the gear you've already equipped. So do be a little bit strategic with the stuff you infuse. You don't just want to waste them on every little bit of gear you get. Now, if you've been storing bounties, make sure to leave three slots as bounties and quests are counted as the same. So you don't want to hold no more than 60 bounties so you can allow for new quests when you sign in. And we've all seen this happen too many times before with people not being able to start the new expansion and they're wondering why they're not getting a new quest. It's because they've actually got a full slot of bounties and there is no room for some new quests. Now we're moving on to what is the hardest thing in the game and that is to clear your vault. So as you can see on the screen, I've managed to be really strict with mine and got it down to a really low number, which I'm actually surprised about. Don't be shy. Anything like duplicates, weapons you haven't used in a while, flare items which can be pulled from collections anyway you don't need to have any of these in there keep stuff that you genuinely like like the old seasonal ritual weapons i've got some in here from black armory because that was one of my favorite times in destiny with the stuff that we could get and some old raid layer weapons i've kept them as well because just in the hope one day that i'm going to be able to use them again but with stuff like duplicates and everything like that remember you don't need to keep red borders stocked anymore because of the changes coming to crafting be pretty strict, leave loads of room for all the new gear that you're going to get over the next year. I see it all too many times. I look in friends' vaults and they've stored ghosts, they've got duplicate exotics, they've stored sparrows, 
emblems, delete it, and then pull it from your collections if you want to try it again later. So there's no excuse, guys. Get your vault cleaned. Now we're going to move on to when Lightfall actually drops and you can get in. If you can get in, first thing you're going to want to do, go straight to your ghost and put the highest XP mod on. So as you can see now, I've only got the XP gains increased by 8%. That's because I've completed the season pass and it doesn't matter anymore. I've unlocked all the artifact mods and I'm high enough to do whatever. And it's near the end of the expansion. But as you can see, this mod is fragile and will expire at the end of season 19. Now this mod has always been the same like this. It will always expire. So what you're going to want to do is go straight to your ghost, equip the increase XP gains by 12%. You don't need to worry about having any detect cash mods or armor mods because they're going to be no use to you right now. So when you have unlocked the seasonal artifact, hit the first XP upgrade on the season pass. And if you have saved some bounties, cash in the planetary bounties and not the playlist ones. Leave them alone for now. And there is a reason for that, which we will get into shortly. So when you start the campaign, just put it on legendary. For those that struggle with doing a solo legendary campaign, I'll be doing a video anyway just to help you guys out, give you some tips and hints. But it will give you better XP and it will give you higher power rewards. Now we know that the legendary campaign is going to be like the Witch Queen, where if you're in a fire team, the enemies are going to be scaled up. So it is actually a lot easier to do it by yourself anyway. And it's more enjoyable. You can just kick back, put your headphones, immerse yourself into the story. I would advise just doing it on your own. But obviously, if you want to play with people, that's totally your choice. Now, something to think about is this. At the end of the Witch Queen campaign, when you've done it on Legendary, you actually got a full set of blue gear, which took you up to the power level. Now, I'm going to assume that Lightfall is going to be the same as that. So that is another incentive for you to play the Legendary campaign. Now getting on to soft caps and power caps. Once you hit the soft cap of 1750, the game will fully open up and this is where the weekly challenges come in. So you're gonna to wanna to cash in your bounties from Vanguard, Gambit, Crucible, and any others like Gunsmith, but make sure you take advantage of the shared wisdom perk, which gives you more XP whilst cashing in bounties in a fire team of two or more. So if you are solo, just join someone in a social space or when you're in a fire team in a playlist and benefit from more XP. Don't be shy. Everyone does it all the time and it's a well-known thing within the Destiny community. And that there is the end of the video, guys. I'm so excited for Lightfall next week. The launch trailer yesterday only heightened my expectations for what's to come. I'm interested to know what your feelings are leading up to next week. And as always, if you've got anything out of the video, please hit the like button. And if I tickled your fancy, maybe subscribe. Until then, I'll see you on the next video.